Stuart, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Hello, Rachel. I'm good. Yeah, you? <laughs> well, we have been rattling for 45 minutes before we've yeah, even yeah. started. Wait. Couldn't you know? I know. Oh, that's you talking. <laughs> How are you? How's things? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, busy. Um, yeah, busy, busy. All good. Well, you are a friend of the fitness industry and every single Facebook group, all we see is Stuart, Stuart will help you. Stuart's got patience. <laughs> Stuart will help you set up your system. But we're going to rewind right the way yeah. back to when you started with Sound Dynamics. How did it all start? Well, right. Okay. So I had just been for a job interview at a Korean firm, I believe it was, like a transport company. And I was walking along the main road in Belper and there was a sign outside the window, um, staff needed. And I popped in and I had kind of a little interview and they said they'll get back to me. And I went away for a few days and I got the job for the transport company. And then Sound Dynamics asked me to pop back in for another little interview, which I think I ended up having over a wheelie bin at the back of the like, building just chatting and um, got the sound dynamics job as well so i found the transport company to say thank you but i didn't want it and i chose the sound dynamics job instead what year was that oh, oh no, my just... god i'm rubbish with dates so god knows it's got to have been 25 years ago oh, so it god. was right at the kind of wasn't right at the beginning of the fitness industry, but it was way back when the fitness industry was just kind of kicking into gear when FitPro and yourself and, you know, those FitPro events at Loughborough University first started. And I think Sound Dynamics used to run, apparently used to run the sound for the first FitPro yeah, events. It did. It did because I qualified. I've got I I predate you with Sound Dynamics. Let me just pop that one in. I I was yeah. there before you, so I yeah. went. I qualified in eighty seven, and I then I I wanted a mic. So I was look. I was watching everybody in America, and they'd all got these these head mics. I was looking around, yeah. and I I can't remember how I got introduced to, but we're we're both from Derbyshire. I got introduced to. It was Steve and Jerry. Steve's That's wife right. was a fitness professional. Val. Val. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Some, I came across Val somehow. It might have been at Ripley Leisure Centre or somewhere. Mm -hmm. So Val was a very early pioneer in fitness. And yeah. she introduced me to her husband, Steve, and Jerry. Right. Jerry Cornell. Jerry Cornell. Yeah. Good yeah. old Jerry. And yeah. they had. I went to their shop. No, they didn't even have a shop then. It wasn't on Bridge Street. It was... No might have even been at Steve's house. Right. And I bought a, a I can't even, I had it for years. I've had it, had it for years. I bought a mic off them. And yeah. so I became friend of Sound Dynamics from the early, uh, I think that's about 1988. So did you get a right. job with Steve and Jerry? Yeah, so they, they started Sound Dynamics and they had a little place in Maitney at the back, kind oh, of at did? the back of the Bush. That's right. Um, and then they grew, grew and grew and moved to a big place at the top of King Street in King Belper. Street. That's right. Yeah. The main road in Belper. Yeah. Um, and arguably it was probably too big a move. Um, so they then moved down onto Bridge Street in Belper and got a yeah. smaller place. And I think they just moved in when I kind of had that interview. So they just moved into this building. I had the interview. There was probably about four or five of us then. And that's, yeah, that's where it started. Um, and then it got to the stage where I think they arguably was getting a little bit tired of doing what they had been doing for the last, like, 10 years, going to Fit Pro and different events. And, um, and there wasn't – I don't think there was kind of fitnessy people as such. They were, you know <laughs> – Steve was an engineer. Um, he could make things, and Jerry was a salesman, so he could sell it. So Steve made it, and that's how it started originally. He made something for Val because it didn't exist. Yeah, um, so she wanted a portable system. 
with a headset and wanted to slow down the music and speed it up. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Steve made it and Jerry sold it and that's how it all began. Um, and then, like I said, I think they got a little bit tired of it and Jerry went on his way and Steve asked me to take over. He gave me some shares in the company. So me and Steve ran it then for a while. And then I offered to buy Steve out, buy his shares off him. And that went with to and fro for a while. And eventually he said, yes, let's do it. Um, I kind of said, I think it's worth this. And he was going, I think it's <laughs> worth this. And I kind of met in the middle. And it, and it was all very nice. And I think he was sad to let it go, but probably knew that he needed to maybe. Um, and it was all good. He, he bought a house in Greece and bought a car. Oh, did and, and went on his way. And, did he? Oh, uh, I didn't know that. He still lives in, live in the UK, but as far as I know, they've still got a house in Greece as well. Amazing. Um, and I think I wanted to like, why don't we do this and let's go back to Fit Pro and we need to do events again and let's do installs. And Steve and Jerry was like, no, we've tried that. We've done that. We don't want to do that again. So I think they... Yeah, Jerry was never to be seen again. <laughs> Steve, I still see him. I see, I see Steve at Christmas probably most years and kind of get on really well with Steve still. Um, and that's how it was, yeah. That's amazing. Such good times though. So you you could see them that the fitness industry was growing and it needed, and there was a massive opportunity for a really yeah. – you know, yeah, I, I saw these. yeah, definitely. I, I could see these orders coming in by fax. <laughs> so these purchase orders are come across from like Virgin and David Lloyd. And I was like, this little business in the, in Belpa in the UK is kind of selling stuff to, and I was like reading books on Richard, Richard Branson and, and, and these orders was coming through from Virgin Active. So it was like, I was amazed by this, you know, um, and I wanted to push it and they wanted to kind of take the foot off the gas a little bit maybe and it just kind of natural for pass it on to the the younger person and and then I think the staff changed as well so the staff that came in they was buzzing because I was buzzing (laughs) and naturally started to grow and we doubled the turnover and then we tripled the turnover and and then we moved premises and then that that was in yeah everyone was enthusiastic about moving premises as well so just that growth continued i guess um, and you've seen yeah. all the you've seen all the trends come and go as we both have over the years and yeah i think sound dynamics has always had even with steve and jerry it was it was a very recognizable brand logo yeah. i yeah. think and you still hold true very much to this today that, you know, anyone can ring you, pick the phone up, speak to you or one of the engineers, get an answer, get help, get guidance and mm. can be on their way. So that's that's your customer service, I think, must be legendary in the fitness industry. Yeah, and, and giving a lot of credit to Jerry and Steve, I think they they made, Steve made things and he wanted it to be right. So if it didn't work, he wouldn't, he wouldn't go to market. You know, he made it until it worked and, and we went to big brands like Trantec who make the mics and we had our, our name on, on their products and they made Trantec mics for us. Um, and it, it probably struggled when the Chinese kind of boom came in where Steve kind of didn't want to go down that route, I don't mm. think, and rightly so. But then everyone else was doing it. So how can you let everyone else do it and you not jump on the bandwagon a little, little bit? But I think what we did well is we chose products carefully. So we didn't just go down the route and just sell everything. It was mm. like, that one works really well. We'll take that one. And that one works really well. We'll take that one. But we'll still make these ones as well. So it, it was we kind of evolved carefully, I think, rather than just sold all kinds of crap to mm. everyone. We was very careful what we what we tested and we made it made it right for the industry and we added a bit and made sure the headsets were strong and that kind of thing so 
So you were the first. Mm -hmm. So I think there were sound guys, weren't there? there was John May and the guys from yeah. Essex uh, that again they finished now. I think John retired and went to live in Spain. So you got right. you got the big conventions at that time. There were a lot mm -hmm. of events, road shows. We were doing road shows. You were working with mm -hmm. Pure Energy and lot all the brat i mean you and i have just been talking all the big yeah Reebok step all the all the brands that have come through you've been at the forefront doing the music doing the lighting doing the setup and, and so many of the the i mean when me you and i started there was no clubs was there was no virgin active david lord it was leisure centers so you were doing installs at sort of leisure centers around the country and then that changed when the fitness industry grew and you were doing more and more in, in as the fitness clubs uh, started to to open up around the country. Yeah, I think what happened was the a lot of our competitors wanted to get into the install side of things because they thought that that's where the bigger money was. Yeah, and we decided not to do that. We wanted to concentrate on the fitness instructors coming through. So that's what we did. It was like we did the opposite of what everyone else was doing. Um, and then as you as you get older, you realize that that's quite a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, probably didn't realize it at the point, but but it obviously worked. We got, you know, at the fitness instructors, the private fitness instructors was our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Those were the people that we wanted to help. They was coming into the industry. They didn't know what they needed. And we explained what a headset was and how you use it. And here's the sound system. And. And same as we are now, we, it wasn't a case of selling them things they didn't want. We wanted to be very, we wanted to save them money. They didn't have that much money to spend. So it was mm -hmm. like, right, well, you buy this one and you've got a bit more to spend. So you have that one. And um, But then as it progressed, we did start getting the opportunity to do installs as well. And again, that was probably a crossover where Steve didn't want to be going out doing installs. Mm -hmm. And I didn't myself but i could see that if we got an engineer or we got some staff members that wanted to do that or we could sub subcontract to people that wanted to do that then that was another route so we then kind of went well we want to get we want to get both ends of the market as well mm -hmm. we want to concentrate on the private fitness instructors but we also can install into leisure centers and fitness chains and that kind of thing so it's like it's like two ends of the market then isn't it so you've got that covered yeah. How did so we've got the rise and the rise and the rise of the internet then? So then we see shops like Maplin's open, we see mm -hmm. we see I'm gonna say Radio Shack, but I don't think there was a radio, I don't think that was UK based, but Maplin's definitely was yeah. was, was a serious competitor, yeah. I'd have thought pre internet, yeah. and then of course the internet comes yeah. along and then you've got Amazon. So how yeah. does a, a, a business like yours, how do you navigate through those those times how did it affect your business i don't know if it, affect, it affected it in the, i think what happened was you got all these people jump on the fitness bandwagon mm. because the fitness industry was growing and maybe maybe at that point maybe nightclubs and bands and things like that was wasn't becoming as popular or the popularity was dropping a little bit so mm. i think it, probably companies were struggling and then thought they're doing all right in the fitness industry let's yeah. become let's fitness over experts yeah. yeah but the thing was there wasn't fitness experts so even if we lost a few customers to that to those other businesses i think those people then realized that what they bought wasn't right and they kind of came back to us anyway mm. um so i suppose we just stuck to what we knew didn't didn't want to get too involved in other industries although you want to grow you know we would love to do more in education for example but mm. but you've still got to stick to your core market which is mm. fitness um and as you saw with maplin they right. it went i don't know they must have done something well to grow it and then it eventually and they went bankrupt didn't they so mm. and and we found that like you said about sound guys um, i'm sure they did great through x amount of years but you got a lot of companies that i can remember being our competitors whether they knew who we was or we kind of just noticed them and we got quotes come through well I've, 
you know, they, they've priced this up and can you have a look at this? So those people are bad, yeah. but then they kind of disappeared as well. So we, we must have done something right. We stuck with it and we're still here. So I think, yeah, you definitely did yeah. and definitely keep doing. I think, so as we've gone through, I think when, when we saw the rise of, so Amazon, Maplind, we carried on through because people need mm. specialist advice and they definitely need yeah. somebody to speak to on the phone. That's it's all right buying everything off Amazon, but I think fitness professionals, like you say, need to know what's right for their room, right for the budget. Is it going to work? Can they transport it? All those questions that you, you need to know before you buy anything hardware yeah. tech related. So then of course we've got Zumba, we've got Clubber Size, we've got these big brands that come along where yeah. we're seeing this massive influx of people out of the fitness industry for Zumba, say Zumba. I mean, I remember going in having my nails done one day and my nail tech saying, oh, I'm doing the Zumba course. And the next huh. day she'd been on to you. You'd sold the lights, music, <laughs> everything. And she set up in Hina and, you know, was getting 120 people through yeah. the door. So yeah. you, you cap, you really captured that market, didn't you? For, for the, the, the community really went mad then, didn't it? And yeah, we, we got a phone call from Miami. I think it was from <laughs> a guy, I think his name was Stuart as well. Um, and he was like, it's Stuart from Zumba in Miami. <laughs> and we've heard your name. And, um, we, I think I might've emailed him or I'd emailed somebody and said that the issue you can like preempting the issue was that they're going to become a Zumba instructor and then like we've said before and then what you know so then they needed the sound system and the lights or whatever you know it evolved into lighting and then Zumba something else came out into Zumba something and they needed a mic yeah. and Zumba didn't yeah um, and we kind of said it's it's no good kind of getting loads of Zumba instructors and then not having someone to go to or buying the wrong kit and it not be loud enough or it's not the right equipment to do the job. So, yeah, we got this phone call from Zumba, ended up forming a partnership with them. <laughs> Amazing. Which is crazy, yeah. Um, and then, like you said, yeah, then it was club size and it just, there was a point, probably a 10-year period, where there was just lots of brands and fitness was growing and everyone needed sound system and lights and headsets and and... Yeah. And like when you, you know, you mentioned Amazon and it's obviously, it must be, it's easy to buy a book off Amazon. It's just a book. You can't go wrong. But when you're buying a sound system and then you get it and it, you realize it's 15 kilograms and you can't pick it up and <laughs> it's not loud enough or it's not 500 watts, it's only 50 watts. And you're like, what do you, what do you do then? You know, and whether it's true or not, but apparently there's lots of skips outside Amazon and they just, they don't like rework them. I think they just go into a skip. So I've heard that. Yeah, that's true. So we, we fast forward, we're all, we're all going along in our lovely fitness business. And then what happens? <laughs> we have the pandemic. Oh my God. I remember that yeah. first call to you. I thought, shit, we yeah. need to get to, what are we going to do? And you sent me a load of, I think you sent me those mics first to try and we tried to, we tried always, everything. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we were the same. It was like, we knew, we knew things would work, but we didn't really know what order to put <laughs> them in. So we had to figure it out quickly. And I think between, you know, we had, we had things in one room and like <laughs> we were in the other room and was like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> and then you was phoning and it was just, bonkers wasn't it um, it was but it was on I mean, the phone every day it was kind of, yeah it was kind of enjoyable as well though I think we we was determined not to be locked down you know people needed us and we was like I'm going to work is anyone coming with me and was like, <laughs> we're going yeah um, so yeah I mean it I, look, I just wrote a kind of a blog for fit pro last week actually and it, it I wrote it and it was like I enjoyed I enjoyed that two years in a strange kind of way. Although it was bad and weird in another way, it was crazy, you know, working kind of 19 hours a day and people, mm. you having your breakfast at 7 o'clock and people <laughs> was on the phone like, I'm plugging it in, it's not working, what shall I do? It's like, well, I can't not answer the call. So I was answering phone calls and messages and, um, yeah, but it was good that, 
the industry got through it, didn't it? And it was people, bonkers. People that wanted to be determined and move forward, and they kind of did it, and it was good. It was bonkers. It just, I mean, I think you and I spoke every day for that those yeah. initial months, didn't we? Trying to we were just like you said trying everything everything all different yeah. types of equipment you were sending for things i was trying it we're ringing each other backwards and forwards does this work can you hear the music can yeah. we do um yeah it, it, like yeah. I say, it was very exciting yeah and you i can remember that adapter that you bought from amazon <laughs> and it was like it should work and you was like but it doesn't and I thought, well i've got it here in mind <laughs> and then it was the adapter wasn't it from amazon. yeah just yeah. like a cheap apple copy and you change that and then it all worked fine it all worked it, it was mm. um yeah like you say people were ringing all the time but like you say you, we got packages together mics together we worked out how to do everything people ringing up going i've got a 15 year old laptop can we can this work you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it was it and was then obviously you got apples and people have yeah. got new mics and new phones and different lightning adapters and <laughs> Oh, it's just yeah and and like you said you that first few weeks you, you knew that it worked with that laptop but then you had someone with a different connection and you're like well it should work with that one but you need this lead and you need the curly cable and you need the red <laughs> yeah. yeah so two years later we're in two and a half years later we yet again are in a very different fitness industry to what went into the pandemic that was in the middle of the pandemic and now that's come out the other side again it's it's all change again yeah. so business wise where sort of and, and and where are you what are you working on where is it where are you putting your attention what are you seeing what do people want what's growing did, what's dying yeah i think i think we did see as people came out of it i think it got busy again and then you had like you're not in a lockdown and then you're back in a lockdown and then you're back out of a lockdown. So people was going outdoors with the classes and then coming back indoors with the classes. Oh yeah, that's that. right. Yeah, we were no. all buying the party speakers what? then, right? I need a yeah. speaker for a field. <laughs> and then obviously the clubs opened again, so people went back and then, yeah, so it was all over the place for a few months. And then I think it's, I think it then got really busy again and now it's kind of, Again, you get, like we were saying earlier, you get a lot of negative news in the media. So it's arguably steadied off a little bit because people don't know what to spend the money on and what's working and what's not working. Um, but then equally, you've got clubs doing refurbs as well. So mm. you've got maybe clubs are spending more now and maybe private instructors probably not so much. So I don't know. Things come around in cycles again, don't they? And and you get brands relaunch and it goes crazy again and then it goes steady again and i mean i, I i've still not worked out the fitness industry now <laughs> i don't know what you think but it's it's amazing it's great and i love it but there's no there's no structure as in you know there used to be i can remember a time when january was busy and february yeah. was busy and then kind of you got September was a weird month. That used to be busy. So, and then you could kind of work it out where people have eaten too much over Christmas and then yeah. January and February was busy. And then people went on holiday in June, July, August, and then September was busy. But I think that changed again. Yeah. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I definitely do. I think November's looks like it's going to be a really busy month. Lots mm -hmm. of, it's a good, it's got a good four weeks where people are not going on holiday, kids are at school, it's a good four weeks. So it's a good idea for FitPros to do packages and promotions now, yeah. knowing that a couple of weeks into, you've got a couple of weeks in December and then it's it's gonna drop off. But with a bit of luck, it's gonna push through again into January. It's, um, yeah. I think yeah. the whole industry is reinventing itself again. There's, yeah. It's all splintered into different directions, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and we're, we're just seeing, again, uh, more people going back online again because of the dark mm. nights and winter coming in. And um, But like we, again, like we were saying earlier off, off camera kind of thing, we, we still, I still think the fitness industry needs to be in fitness studios and in just in live environments. As, as good as online classes are, 
and it gives people another tie to the bow, if you like, or mm. I just think that people need to be with other people and yeah. be in classes with other people and be chatting with other people and enjoying people's company. And so I think if that if that gets moving again and then you've got the online thing going on as well, I think if you've got that hybrid of online and in classes in live environments, then that's, mm. that's going to be the key, I think. I think you're right as well. And it's yeah. it's down to the marketing, isn't it? It's being present and visible on social media, marketing what you're doing um, and creating a community that's that people want to go out to when it's dark at night. You've got to, it, it's got to be a destination that people want to go for. It's, it, they're not yeah. going to miss it because they're going to see the friends are going to have a great workout. There's so much more to that group exercise class now. Is the venue yeah. nice? Is it a nice, easy to park? Is it the right price point for the area? Yeah, is it, 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 there's so many layers to it. Uh, whereas once upon a time, it was four pound fifty in the scruffy church hall. End of story, and people would go. I think it in it needs more marketing, proper marketing, nice pictures, nice videos. It needs to be updated, good sound. Yeah. All yeah. those things matter. It's it's an experience. That's the word I'm looking for, isn't it? it has to be yeah. the right experience. Yeah. yeah, and you have to you have to work hard at it. Don't you? Yeah. you can't, you know, you're constantly um, renewing your kit and moving forward and having different ideas and and it is difficult, you know, it is difficult that you don't know where to spend your money. But it's like we've said before, if if your speaker is sounding a bit tired and you, you're at that crossroad, well, do I, not, do I buy a new one or do I not buy a new one or are my lights looking a bit old or shall I? reinvent my class a little bit you've got to keep everything you've got to keep reinventing mm. um, and then that keeps people coming back again and then you bring another fitness brand to your kind of your class it's just constantly re-evolving and yeah. evolving yeah. sorry and you know moving forward it does definitely does so what's we were talking earlier what's um what are you what's new what are you selling what's what's kind of new kit wise I think, I don't know about new, I think it's the same. I think people, I think headsets, people have changed their their opinion on a little bit, hopefully, where I think they are realising now that if you do buy a cheap mic and then expect it to do loads of classes per week or you're doing, you know, like a spin class is so sweaty, isn't it? Yeah. And you can't buy a cheap mic, even if you're only doing one spin class a week or, You've got you have got to buy the right kit and and it is the same i suppose in any industry if you if you're a builder you the buy tools. the right kit you buy the right tools and these are tools of the trade that you're going into um and now your online classes it's like you said if you've got a 15 year old laptop then you probably need to get a new laptop you might <laughs> need to get a webcam you know it's it's forever evolving and um, I suppose that's how every industry is, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, things like <coughs> the silent disco, that seems to be emerging yeah. as um, <laughs> we've just been Ibiza and we use the silent disco headphones and I just think they're just phenomenal. And I know quite a few mm. of people in my groups have bought the uh, the online, yeah. uh, sorry, the headsets and they're going out yeah. taking yeah. people walking, they're doing, there's just so there's many just more so things many. you can do with the yeah. headsets um yeah. is that something that's that, emerging yeah definitely we've got we only put we spoke to silent disco themselves and we've got a brand that we deal with who have also got that same kind of setup so we're dealing yeah. with both <clears throat> so they're both on the website and as soon as i put them on the website we got inquiries straight away mm. um and again, it's talking through people's requirements to, right, this one's probably more suitable for you and this one's more for a fitness studio and mm -hmm. are you using it indoor or outdoor? Or, do you think they're particularly suited for a certain class? Um, I think they're great for mind-body. I think mm. they're great for outdoor workouts. Now, I th yeah, now I think they work for everything. We had them on uh, the yoga fit retreats for for all the yoga classes pilates classes we had them on yeah i've seen people doing club aside this um this trish hill over in um who's sort of stoke you talks to where i see her, her outdoor festival um classes that she does 
Um, quite a yeah. lot of the guys are doing walk fit, taking groups outside on walks. Think, yeah, yeah, it's a real wide, wide range, isn't it? Yeah. And you were saying you feel that people kind of focus totally. in and concentrate a little well, bit more. No, with like now I'm listening to you. This sounds crystal clear. I'm just, you're in my ear. The music's in my ear at the right the, the right volume whereas yeah. even in a clash you know <laughs> some people might want the volume higher some people want it lower some people want the the, the instructions and it's it's much more intimate it's a more intimate yeah. and for, for you as an instructor it's just like talking there's no shouting mm. because you pick it everything up everyone can hear it's it's a much i think when you're teaching a class when you don't use a mic you don't realize how much energy you use just trying to to get your voice out there when you've got the headset yeah. on and the, and the earphones it would be just the, the same amount of energy <clears throat> that i'm using to talk to you right now it makes the whole job so much easier and mm. also i wished back in the day i i'd use those because you know like lots of other instructors i've had nodules on my vocal cords and i've had problems with my voice and and all that is down to shouting over music 100 yeah. percent so if I was starting again, I would be looking at investing those one from a health and safety standpoint for myself to protect my voice. Cause it's, it's all well and good when you, you know, you're young and you're in your twenties and you're shouting and getting the vibe, but when you get a bit older, <laughs> you know, it's a lot more energy and yeah. once you've damaged your voice, there's no going back. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's, yeah. there's multi-levels and there's multi-layers to that as well. Hmm. And that's another good example of, the evolution of yeah. fitness, isn't it? You know, it's another thing that you could try. It's and again, particularly for a fitness studio, they're not an expensive package. And once you've bought the package, you've got everything mm. you need, and you can clean them down, and you can reuse them, and you can add to them, and you can charge them up, and you get the whole package. Um, so again, it's something else that you can incorporate into your your kind of brand of yourself and you know you're doing zumba or you're doing this or you're doing that but you're also doing your silent disco or your silent yoga or your walk fit or whatever it yeah, may be. definitely and again it opens yeah. up all kinds of other different business you know events like you know silent discos you can run them as well can't you so yeah yeah it, it's it's yeah. definitely yeah that op all these products open up a whole different market don't they Definitely, what yeah. um yeah. sound system wise what's what's the most popular sound system that you sell i would still say we do a, a little speaker called an aqua oh, yeah. which is the next one up from your little party one that you've got yeah and um i think it's only 69 pound at the moment something like that it's on Good. like an offer that we've got on and I can remember us first getting it out of the box and it was like, I oh, would we'll just try this little speaker. I think they rated it at 30 watts or 50 watts or something like that. Not, probably not even that, 20 watts. And we got it out and switched it on and it was like, wow, this is amazing <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and again, we've had videos of people doing Zumba classes with 30 people in the, in the class. And they've just got this little 69 pounds, 70 quid aqua oh, system. Um, so that's that's been a good one for probably about two or three years now um and then i think like i said you've got people buying your good quality microphones now so you you know you try and take mics and we do different color headsets with them and again just investing in good kit mm. um, and mixing it up as well you see you get these little speakers that you mix them with a good mic and you end up with a good package for mm couple hundred quid you know it doesn't have to be dead expensive um it's just choosing what you need for your classes i guess mm, mm. oh those party speakers i mean i've just took my party speaker to ibiza i take it on board with me everybody always asks, oh tell us about that speaker it's such yeah, a good, good speaker easy to handle yeah. um so yes yeah, so what's on the horizon any any new kit that's on the horizon what do you think where do you think it's going um new kit wise i mean i would have said the silent the silent kind of yeah. headphone kit we've just just put that on in the last say four months i know it's been knocking around for a while but i think you had to hire it a lot of the time as well yeah so i think you did, some yeah. people would put off by hiring it um mm -hmm. whereas they can actually buy it now from us mm -hmm. um 
just had a really good conversation with a fitness chain in uh, I can't say too much about it actually but a new fitness chain that's coming over to the UK that's really exciting um, just got off the phone to them this morning um, so yeah I think things are things are gradually probably coming out of over, you know off the back of the last three years and hopefully next year it kicks on again yeah we do and i'm really hoping that you're going to rent some or buy some amazing space in belper and set up a communal podcast and online studio that we can all come and use every week i think the community thing is still dead important i think like we said before i think people need to go to classes or go to community-based things i think when you see you know when when i was a kid everyone played football together and the you know people kids playing football and adults playing football and and when you go back like my dad always says the same thing you know it's not like it used to be be, (laughs) everyone used to be out on the streets and in the parks and I think it's as good as these online classes are and I think it's an it's dead important that you do move with technology and you can have that as part of your what your your offerings to the industry but I do think people need to get back to fitness classes full on and go for it yeah i do i think we need to do an event stuart we need to do a silent <clears throat> disco event or something in in our local area don't we it yeah would be actually, yeah it would be good um yeah it would be do you good. um you've been to ibiza this year obviously to the fitness yeah. event there have you been to any more this year no, uh, IFS, IFS, that's all. I went to the one, the Elevate event at, um, remind me where that was, in that's London. In London. Uh, at Excel. Me, at Excel. I went Excel. to that, which was quiet. Um, right. Yeah, busy. Yoga Fit was great. People were back doing Yoga Fit this week, which was phenomenal this weekend. Yeah. As we know, IFS. Busy, busier yeah. than ever before, didn't you? Busy, back to sort of pre-COVID. Um, and it was like, it was as if people had the trauma, not the trauma, but the the upset of COVID had finally gone and we'd moved on, mm. and and that's what it felt like. Um, IFS, again, that great new area that that was fabulous. The sound system and everything in there was amazing. Um, it was a great event, but I, I think maybe this year IFS will really come into its own. I'm hoping that everybody yeah. will be back in IFS, but. I do think local events, I do, they don't need to have hundreds of people, you know, a good quality, local, 30, 50, 60 people, you know, having a great yeah. time, food, drink, great music, great teachers, you know, yeah. monthly, every, a, a, you know, a destination, whether that's a Saturday night, whether that's a Friday night, you know, whether it's mixed in with the social. I mean, I would much rather go to something like that on a Friday night than you know, go to a pub or whatever. But um, yeah. I think I think we need to look at different live, different live experiences now with fitness, yeah. fitness and community and socialising together. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think there is plenty of venues. Yeah. Um, you know, we go we go up to Kettleston Hotel a lot. Um, yeah. Just like particularly in the summer. But again, you look at venues like that, which are, you've got those throughout the UK. Mm. where they've got like your English type of traditional English garden and yeah, kind yeah. of the wedding venue-ish type of buildings. But you can just visualize yoga events outside and something else going inside and then you can have wine at night and it's, it's combining all that together. Isn't it? Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's doable. I think it is. I mean, that there were some fitness festivals and things that went on. I think there's one in a big one in Wales that happened a retreat, um, and I, I saw I saw a few dotted around. And some of the big main festivals had fit, fitness element tagged onto it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. It's like doing it the other way around, isn't it? It's like yeah. in a fitness event, but having things tagged onto the fitness event rather yeah. than being tagged onto a different event. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like when I when I saw at your Emma at the Duffield Carnival, I mean that those kind of events. If there was a fitness element with that, a fitness tent, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think there's an idea somewhere to to put that all together. Yeah, um, yeah, lots of ideas there, Stuart. I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I do. Like I said, just going back to 
to like the live classes and live i think that's when i think that mingling of people again mm. that's when ideas can be created more and then you meet someone that's doing something else and then you think well we can work together and all these partnerships that we've always done you know your zumbas and your clubber size and your bounce and your boogie bounce and it was all from just seeing people and going well, what's great for me and you can do this and we'll give you a discount and we're here to help out and how to set it up and you you struggle to do that online um, yeah there's two there's two different sides to it and there's online is definitely a great platform but i still think the, the meeting of people needs to needs to continue and get yeah get bigger the again, yeah. if the fitness industry is going to continue well it's got it needs to grow so it needs to it needs some new direction it needs community it needs grassroots it, yeah it needs not just to be a health club market it can't just be health clubs gyms and leisure centers and centers chains and online then there there's always no. been a real need for community i mean um started community locally called it community it wasn't even people in communities when i started calling my classes community classes you were just looked down on because you didn't work in a when actually the community guys made more money ran really good businesses you know locally mm. and, and 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 cultivated this whole new part of the industry that never even really existed before i think yeah. that that needs to come back and it um yeah. it definitely can come back but it yeah. needs marketing, social media. It it's that is a business. That is a full yeah. on business yeah. to create that. It's not um, that's not hobbyist. That's definitely somebody that's no, and it's got like, an eye for business. Yeah, yeah. And like you, you know, what Claire did with um, the Community Fitness Awards. Yeah. You know, it was great. You know, it was busy. The events was great. Um, the awards was brilliant. Um, everyone had a good time. It. it represented people in the industry and and that middle section that's probably the most important section of mm. the industry like you said you've got your health clubs and you've got your online but then you've got this massive group of people in the middle which is arguably the most important people yeah and and going back to what we said at the very beginning our sound dynamics started and it was the private fitness instructors you know we mm. we could the change was there or the or the leisure centers was there at least and we we went down that route a little bit but our bread and butter was always helping the community fitness instructors mm. yeah it, it so, really yeah it's definitely it's definitely important it is and i definitely think the business is still there i think it's had a rough ride the community business has, has been difficult to navigate mm. everything that's gone on and come out the other side and with the emergence of low cost, 15 quid a, a month, all singing or dancing. But there's still, I always will, there's still a market for the cheers theory. Your business is built on it, my business is built on it, where people ring up, you know the customer, you know who they are, you know what the problems yeah. are, you've got time to have a chat with them, there's somebody on the door. There's still, all of the businesses that have lasted through the pandemic and have come out of the pandemic, the other side have been customer service facing businesses that have really yeah. looked after their customers front and center. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think that's, it's still there. There is still a business to be had there. It's changed. You might need to tweak things a little bit and embrace a bit of tech as well, but it's still there. And it, and it but it means putting yourself out there and, and being visible and, and, and probably collabing with local businesses in your area, other local businesses, clothes shop, coffee shops, restaurants, you know, getting together, creating little local business network networks. Yeah. So there's so yeah. much you can do. I, I think you've got to, like you said, you've got to get out and reach. If you're local, you've got to say, okay, where's the hairdressers? Where's the beauty shops? Where's, they're all in business too. Reach out to them, yeah. make friends, make a network, do a collab, do a, do a talk, do a workshop. It doesn't have to be a weekly class anymore, does it? It could be in the summer, you do six weeks silent disco with your earphones, then you do six weeks of something else. You know, this, we've got to be flexible now, I think. Yeah, and I think, again, when things go around in those cycles and, you know whether it's people been locked down or COVID or whatever it may be um when people unfortunately do drop out of the industry then 
the doors open for other people mm -hmm. to come in that industry yeah. and and there might be areas of the UK where well, there is definitely that there is, there's yeah. no one in that area at the moment yeah. so that's the area that you've got to get into and um yeah things things change and move on and you've it's a good time to set up now really when you think about it isn't it, it because... is it, you totally are because there's definitely a, a market for people that don't want to be a member of david lloyd don't want to be a member of of anytime fitness or whatever the cheaper brands are they don't they don't want all that you think people think they want 24-hour gym and tennis and swimming pool and all that. actually there's a massive nucleus of people that want to go to a friendly local class twice a week <laughs> that's it yeah they don't need yeah. anything else. That's what they want. They're running Definitely. a busy life. They're doing other things. And that's mm -hmm. what they want, isn't it? Even once a week. Yeah. yeah. And there always yeah, has been that, that middle market has always been there. But at the yeah. moment where we're marketing, they are being pulled in other directions from other. So they're not being, they're not going to other gyms or classes. They're going to other social things. If you make this, the, the, the class, the social, yeah. the community, the fun, they will come back. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose it's difficult for that middle, middle yeah. part of the industry, if we call it that. You know, it, it could because they're bombarded with all the clubs, aren't they? You know, it's like, yeah. and then they're going, how can we compete with all this? But you're not competing with that. Yeah. You know, there's there's a different market for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, they maybe it's. Use. Yeah, maybe that's the case. Maybe it's. Is kind of going back to seeing the people that want to. That have always wanted to go to those village halls and that little leisure center studio and um yeah maybe so yeah yeah i think there is there definitely is that uh, local schools i mean there's yeah and I, I get it that a lot of local venues have closed church halls have put the prices up etc you know and, and 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 i get it that there's some areas are more saturated you mm -hmm. know lots of halls and things are needed by scouts and brownies and dancing club and kickboxing and karate and all that but it always yeah. was <laughs> when yeah. i think locally i wanted a hall in ripley and i had to wait till the karate man died till i got it <laughs> that when he died i was in <laughs> got this <Yeah>. slot <laughs> and you um, think um, you think equally there must be hundreds of venues out there that are struggling and hundreds. would love for you to knock on the door and go can I have Tuesday night or oh, Wednesday I, evening or whatever it may be? I mean, a friend of mine, Helen Pybus, if she listens to this, I hope I know that she said to me that she was looking for better venues, upgrading from school halls and where she is on in Lower Staff, which is has been hit badly by tourists, etc. And she'd approached a hotel uh, Tuesday night. Can I have it? Yeah, she can have the function room. The secondary spend for the hotel is amazing. Thirty mm. people will have a stop, have a drink. Some people then book functions. It got people into the hotel. She's, they've put yeah. all her details on their Facebook page. It's just been the best thing. And there's, there's lots of, if I think locally around us, there's loads of venues, pubs, yeah. restaurants that have got empty rooms that would be, would love 20 people to come on a, a Tuesday night at seven o'clock uh, yeah. and frequent. You've just got to think a bit more laterally now, I think, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it does seem, you know, the more you think about it, the, the opportunities are out there. Maybe it's the same with everything, isn't it? You know, we, we was, we've been talking, messaging about houses and things like that. And, you know, it's like when people aren't buying houses, then that's probably could potentially be a good time mm. to buy houses. When people are leaving the industry, that could be a good time for other people to get become part of the industry. So it's... Mm ups and downs and cycles of things and things change and new things come out and it's just finding those opportunities in everything that everyone does isn't it mm, absolutely yeah and being open to to new opportunities yeah thinking out of the box a little bit and you know not not being drawn into the negativity of what you hear on the news and yeah. all the rest of it you know because again oh, like definitely when again we were saying earlier when you, you go out places seem busy and pubs are busy and restaurants are busy and shops are busy and but well, apparently they're not you know we're being told they're not <laughs> so everyone believes it so they don't go but when you do go it, it's, it's completely different to what you've just seen on the news it's incredible i mean we say we see it all the time in our area don't we people say oh it's anyway it's 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 there's always going to be an echelon of people 
who want to invest in their health and fitness. So whether they want to join mm -hmm. a gym, go to a leisure center, go to a Zumba class, club a size class, silent yeah. disco class, two, three times a week in the local area, always. It's always gonna be there, regardless of what's going on in the economy. Um, yeah. You've just got, as a FitPro, you've just got to make sure that when someone is thinking about doing that, you're there, you're front and center, you're social media, yeah. you're on next door, you've got a good, fully functioning website that's attract, that's bringing in people, SEO, you know, that you're out, you, you're in the community, you're networking with, with local businesses, you're going to the local networking meetings, you're, you know, you, you might be sponsoring the local kids' football team, you've got to be front and center. Um, yeah. You've got to be in the community. If you want a business in the community, You've got to be involved in the community, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's another key word, business, is is the fact that you are running a business here. Mm. You know, I mean, I know, I know a lot of the, I know a lot of fitness instructors, it's more of a hobby. But if you are going in uh, kind of full time into it, then it is a business and you do need to run it as a business and you've got those tools that you need. And, and, and I suppose that's another thing it is, it's running a business like a business and mm, it and, is. and fitness is difficult because it's not it's not that traditional industry is it still yeah even now you know we're saying we've been in it for 25 years 30 years whatever it's it's still not viewed upon like a real job almost is it yeah absolutely um, yeah which is weird in itself it know, is especially weird. when you've got it is like i said before we're, it's such a it's a very different industry it's a weird industry. Not like anything. Else. It's like we've said this many, many times. Oh, that was a great conversation, Stuart. Where can any everybody find you? <laughs> when when do you pick up the phone? Seven o'clock in the morning, ten o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, well, website is www.sound-dynamics.co.uk. Office opens at half past eight, ideally. <laughs> Just around six. Um, <laughs> Telephone numbers on the website. You can check us out on Facebook. Uh, message me anytime on Facebook. Go to Instagram. All the normal, all the normal sites and all the normal contacts. And then watch this space. Let's get something up and running locally. Let's get an event yes, going and get that right podcast here. studio done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Joe. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, Rachel. Thanks. <laughs>